name is Alex and welcome to Magic Missile Minis. In this video, unfortunately, I'm not going to be doing the diorama project that I had mentioned I was going to be doing last week. Um, there's a couple of things I'm still waiting for in the mail. So uh, stay tuned, that video will be coming out shortly. Uh, I just need to wait for a couple more things to arrive. Um, so instead of that video, today I'm going to be doing something that a lot of people have been requesting, and that is a video on how to sculpt female faces. In the last video I did on this, I sculpted a very kind of space marine-y, um, square-jawed, um, decidedly male face. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a female face. When starting to sculpt faces, I usually like to sculpt them onto one of these tools. It's kind of this flat, long uh, tool that I got with my first set of green stuff. You don't need to use anything this fancy, as it were. You can just use like a extra base or something like that. But I personally like to use this tool. Um, I'm going to take this guy and I'm just going to stick some green stuff onto uh, the base or tool or whatever you're using. and this is basically going to be the armature for the face that we're going to be working on. The goal of this is not to really add any details to it, but just to make sure that it is the right shape. The shape that we're generally going to be going for is going to... One of the main things I'm trying to focus on is making sure that the front of the face here is nice and rounded. Um, because otherwise the faces just seem too flat and they kind of look like a drawing that's on a box or something like that and it just uh, ends up looking pretty bad. So we want to make sure this front part of the face is nice and rounded and curved. Uh, we want to make it kind of like an oval shape but at the bottom here since we're doing a female face we're going to want to make sure that it is nice and pointy and sharp. Um, when doing faces and details this small, we kind of need to just exaggerate the features so that uh, even at this scale, they are recognizable. So for female faces, I generally try to make the chins nice and sharp and pointy. And once I have the point of the chin to where I like it and feel as though the face is still, still has the right curve around the face, like it needs to be, I'll let this set and then we'll come in later once it's all hardened. So I found these two pieces here that I was planning on using for another project, but really actually showed some of the key differences between male and female faces. As we see here on the male face, all of these details, they tend to end in a bit of a lip or a line that's kind of defined not only by the fact that it ends, but actually has this like I don't know, I guess just a lip or extra detail um, added to all of the different designs. Whereas here on the female face, you see that that's not present, which just makes the whole face seem a lot softer. And if done right, will also help make it look rather feminine. And since we're working at such a small scale, we don't have enough room to really focus on the nuance of a female face. So you might be sculpting a female that has a particularly square jaw, but we might not be able to really communicate that well um, when sculpting the face simply because of how small we're sculpting them. So as we focus on the face, we're going to be trying to make all of our details end a little bit more softly and not adding these extra kind of indentations for the brow or the mouth. Also, having just a sculpted face that you're basing your own face off of can be very, very helpful because it is basically the best kind of reference that you can have. It's something that you can actually spin and look at all the different angles of what it looks like. So if you have a female face that is sculpted from another model or miniature that you have, definitely reference that as you're sculpting your own. So going back to our uh, armature that we've made, now that it's set, I'm going to actually just scrape in a little bit of a line into it right in the middle of the face because this is going to be where the eyes are. This is generally what I base all the different parts that I'm sculpting off of is where the eyes are going to be sitting on the face. So the first detail we're going to be adding is the brow of the miniature. So we add a bit of a flat piece of green stuff and just generally sculpt that on to make it 
uh, fairly seamless onto the rest of the model. And then I'm gonna make this character have a generally a fairly furrowed brow. And we're going to want to create this kind of angled effect. We're gonna probably soften this up lighter because again, we're sculpting a female face as opposed to a more square jawed um, space marine face. But generally when sculpting the forehead, you wanna think about the temples on the side here and how they, um, it's not a perfect circle going from the forehead to the temples. Again, I do wanna smoothen this out a little bit before I keep uh, going to make sure that the details are uh, not too harsh. And then we can focus on the brow here. So I'm actually going to take my needle here and blend it into the rest of the face. And it's not going to be a perfectly straight line when we're doing this. We're also getting the contour of the inside of the face. So we're gonna get something a little bit like this, as you can see here. Uh, we've got the point in and we've got the little underneath part here that is gonna wear, be where the top eyelid is going to be. And just blending in the size of it here so it's not too harsh. Again, that's gonna be the main focus of this model because we're trying to focus on it, making every all the details as soft and subtle as possible while still having them present to capture the um, femininity of the face, I guess you could say. Something that's very important to keep in mind is when you're sculpting the forehead, this is gonna be the primary location of all the emotion of the face. We don't have tons of space to work with what the eyes are doing or what the mouth is doing. So when trying to communicate emotion on your miniatures, the brows are going to be doing the heavy lifting, and then after that, probably the shape of the mouth. The next thing we're going to do is start emphasizing the cheekbones a little bit. When sculpting at this scale, uh, emphasizing the cheekbones becomes a lot more important than, say, if you're doing a portrait, like doing a drawing, or if you're sculpting a larger figure. Um, but again, we don't have a lot of um, room to capture nuance, so uh, the cheekbones are need to be fairly pronounced. And what we're kind of doing here is creating a secondary plane. Um, it is a bit of a triangle that goes down the uh, face. You can kind of see that here as we have a raised area that is kind of the same uh, layer or level as um, obviously the same side on the other side and then goes down where we're going to be putting the mouth later on. As we get closer to the middle of the face, right where the eyes are, it's quite fine to have a fairly strong crease, but we wanna smoothen out around the edges of where the eyes are going to be so that there's a bit of a transition between them. Again, going back to our reference to see what everything is going to look like is always incredibly helpful. And just comparing the two side by side will give you a good idea of what you might need to change as you're working on your sculpt. And as I sculpt these details, one of the things I like to do is over pronounce the detail to make sure that it's there. And if I want to make it a little bit more subtle, I'll soften it in afterwards. But just generally trying to make it far more noticeable and pronounced than it actually is going to be in the final sculpt. And that tends to be the best way to add that nuance that is so difficult to add in, at this scale. With these details added, I generally like to let them set completely before working on the next part of the face. That way we don't ruin all the nice work we did to make the cheekbones and the forehead when trying to add the nose later on. And as we sculpt the cheekbones, I end up kind of creating this cavity that you can see here um, for where the eye is going to be. So 
we kind of the cheekbone can kind of be um, the cheekbone can kind of be divided into a couple different parts. You have the top here that is going to be the uh, where the bottom eyelid would be located, and then it extends into this front part right here, where we're going to later on add the nose and the mouth. And that in itself is flat right here, where we're going to add the nose and the mouth. And then we have the slight incline towards the face right underneath both of the eyes that we added with the brows for the upper eyelid. So the next part of the miniature I'm going to be working on is the eyes. Um, I take tiny little bits of green stuff and add them right into the crevice that we made with the other parts of the uh, sculpt. Um, in the past, I've drilled little holes and made, made little circles that I um, add in for the eyes that I add, that add the eyelids in later. Just kind of realize that that's kind of unnecessary and uh, a little long-winded. So instead, I'll just add these little pieces of green stuff and sculpt them into a loose eye shape. Um, and after repeating the process on the other side of the face, I'll take a small piece of green stuff that I kind of make a into a long teardrop, and I add that onto the face as well uh, to create the nose. And again, in att an attempt to make this face particularly feminine, I'll keep the nose fairly small uh, and sharper as opposed to having it be super wide. When sculpting noses in particular, I found it's very important to turn the uh, face as you're sculpting it to make sure that the profile is um, also actually in the right shape because I find that a lot of the noses that I sculpt tend to be too flat because I was only looking at it straight on and not looking at how far out from the face the nose was going. And after that, I will put a little indentation to where I want the mouth to be. And then I will add some green stuff to add the lips. I'll generally make one, uh, add one piece of green stuff that I'll split in half for the lips, since it's very difficult to actually get two pieces of green stuff to be the right size um, for both of them. So I'll add something that looks a little bit like this, and then taking a craft knife, I will cut it in half. And while at this point it looks kind of goofy, um, we'll sculpt that into the right shape kind of blending in at the corners of the mouth to make those a lot smaller. And then continuing to just kind of push and pull all of the shapes around until they're at a place where we like them. Um, this can be very tricky. Um, the face detail is very difficult to do. Um, surprisingly more difficult to do than some of the other parts, but you're going to want to focus the uh, largest part of the mouth to the center and have it fade out as you get farther away from the middle of the mouth. One thing that can be helpful to note is that a neutral mouth is not straight across. It actually generally dips down from the middle. These kinds of details are very difficult to do once you're starting out. And my suggestion is to um, just keep doing faces, even if you just want to practice and do a face like this with no other miniature. This can be really, really helpful. Um, just to get used to kind of pushing and pulling. Again, using reference is always helpful so you know what needs to be changed. Um, and that way you can actually make sure that you're not just 
kind of wandering around in the dark, you actually have a sense of what direction you need to be going as you're pushing and pulling. So here you can see the final product of so here is the final product that I've been working along with you guys. Um, I'll be honest, this face is not the, my favorite face that I've ever sculpted. Um, I think it's uh, a lot cleaner than some of the other ones that I've done, but it still needs a little bit of work, I'd say. Um, which kind of brings me to my last point that I want to talk about in this video, is the sculpting faces is very, very hard. So uh, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, this is something that does take time. The first faces I sculpted looked just awful and weird and wonky and the eyes were all over the place. It looked more like a Picasso painting than anything. So uh, don't be too hard on yourselves. Um, this is something that just takes a lot of practice. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notified when I release more content. If you have any ideas, questions, or things you want me to talk about on camera, you can leave them in the comments below. But once again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.